Hello, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book review. Today, I will be covering the book Off the Map. Here is the uh, front cover. I really like this design. The um, spine is the only place that you see the title of the book, at least on the cover. I bought this book in mid-late August of 2019 uh, while visiting a friend in New Orleans. We had worked together at that summer camp in 2019 and I wanted to hang out a bit longer. He offered to show me the town. I found a used bookstore there. I searched used bookstores to be honest. Blue Cypress Books. It says giving used books a second story on historic Oak Street. And um, on the back is a frequent reader coupon. I've used this six times. It says, fill up the boxes to receive a free book value not to exceed $10. I've only ever been there once, which means that what they actually count is how many books you buy, not how many times you've been there. I bought this book for $7.50. But if you turn into the... Um, the page where normally like the ISBN and the copyright information and the uh, genre and all the sorting information would be, instead is a logo for CWC, um, if you can see it there. It says, published by the Crimeth Inc. X Workers Collective. I think it's technically supposed to be pronounced Crime Think. X Workers Collective. It says, additional copies of this book can be had for $3, including postage costs. In addition to this book, we have also left a fair number of other breadcrumbs behind us on our path into the dark woods. Books, zines, movies, music, and newspapers are among them, some available from us for free and others for a bit more. It has an anti-copyright claim. The C is both up side down and backwards, anti-copyright 2003, for the next 400 years this book and any of the elements herein may be reproduced by anyone through any methods imaginable and must enter the world with great love and resolve. Of course, under no circumstances shall any monetary gain result from these endeavors. The cover artwork by Nikki McClure who cut the image out of a single piece of black paper with an exacto knife printed on recycled paper in Canada by the workers at Hignell Book Printing. The preamble is kind of like their explanation for why they did this book. It reads, We wrote off the map while we were living in a flat on the edge of the woods in Prague. The zine was our daily anchor, some days it seemed like we only emerged long enough to walk Ida, the golden retriever with whom we shared the flat, along with Dee Dee, our mystic roommate who forbade us to cook with garlic, decorated the house with pictures of her guru Baba Ram, and suggested that excessive coffee consumption blocked access to the higher chakras. She moved out long before we finished the zine, taking Ida with her and removing our main excuse for leaving the flat. When we first decided to write a zine about that summer of travel, we wanted to tell the stories that had shaped us so definitively, to give thanks for all the hands that had guided us along the way, to lend a taste of the wings we'd borrowed to anyone who might be waiting on the ground for an extra push. When we finally finished, after almost two months of mining our collective memories and trying to hammer it all into some kind of shape, we were so sick of looking at the thing that actually distributing it seemed anticlimactic. We agreed to circulate 25 copies apiece and let the universe have its way with them. And it did. This is not one of those 50 copies, I don't think, because it turns out that when they got back to the States, Crime Think had started distributing it, and they worked with Crime Think to distribute it in a way that they felt was appropriate. The last two paragraphs of this six-paragraph preamble are really interesting. I'm going to read the fifth paragraph and then the last sentence of the sixth paragraph. 
I think that those two uh, sections of this preamble are the most important. One, because it explains the author's personal thoughts on republishing this and the changes in the years since. And the last sentence just really resonates with me and is part of why I love this book. I've only read it the once, but... As whenever I look at it on the shelf, I know exactly what book it is and why I liked it. The urge to edit is almost irresistible. We can't see anymore with the same eyes that took in these stories or speak with those voices. Since these stories took place, we've lived through exhilarating heartbreaks, devastating transformations, long stretches of brutal confusion, and entire seasons of bliss. And it's tempting to tweak the old versions a little to trim the bits that now seem excessively simplistic or ridiculously earnest and bring them in line with our more weathered hearts. But we haven't. Because underneath it all, we still trust that vision of hope and possibility that fueled the writing of the zine. Sometimes, possibly, our dreams urge us to reveal ourselves intimately to an audience of strangers and hope they'll meet us where we most want to be. I like the idea of discussing why they want to edit this, but they also don't want to. They know they are not the same people they used to be, but they appreciate offering that window into time to see that version of themselves. And that last line, sometimes, possibly, our dreams urge us to reveal ourselves intimately to an audience of strangers and hope they'll meet us where we most want to be. That one resonates with me in 2003 when this book was first published. Chat rooms were a thing, but they weren't commonplace. Nowadays, we have Discord, we have Skype, we have... Facebook Messenger, we have all these forms of social media, Twitter, we have YouTube comments, we have forum sites all over the internet, all these different ways to talk to people and sometimes to reveal ourselves intimately to an audience of strangers. Oftentimes those people don't meet us where we want, where we most want to be. They'll spin and you our words so that they come out worse than we intended them to be but we dream that people will meet us where we most want to be the title page simply reads this is what it means to be an adventurer in our day to give up creature comforts of the mind to realize possibilities of imagination because everything around us says, no, you cannot do this. You cannot live without that. Nothing is useful unless it's in service to money, to gain, to stability. The adventurer gives into tides of chaos, trusts the world to support her, and in doing so, turns her back on the fear and obedience she has been taught. She rejects the indoctrination of impossibility. My adventure is a struggle for freedom. That's what this book is about. It's her struggle for freedom. She and her friend, Kib and Kika, wander off meeting all manner of people. It's a story of conversation. It's a book, a memoir about travel. It's them being human and meeting humans. And it's fascinating to me to read that but it's also just a glimpse into another time another Europe I don't think we'll ever see this kind of world again not explicitly this way at least it's artistic it's adorable it is stylistic there's little artwork here these cute designs pictures of places they visited pictures thoughts anything and everything. This book caught my attention because of the yellow. It is so vibrantly yellow and black and 
not a lot of books are bound that way. But, you know, yellow catches the eye. That right there caught my eye. It's why I love the New Mexico flag, why I like being a New Mexican, because we have that amazing flag. Funnily enough, the other state I lived in and grew up in, Maryland, also has those big old bold yellow and black and red and white designs. It's eye-catching, this book. And then once I started reading it, it caught me. And part of what interests me about it is that it is the thought, the memories of two women. And most importantly, this just offers a glimpse into a different kind of mindset than I'm normally used to. They're not wilderness explorers. They're people moving about urban spaces. I bought this book for seven fifty in 2019. If I found this book again, I'd probably buy a second copy and give it to someone else. If you find it, I'd genuinely be surprised because it seems like it wouldn't have been published to, like they wouldn't have printed too many copies. If you find it, check it out though. That's my recommendation at least. My name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book review. See you next time.